So recently, I've been playing a pretty chilly game. Some nice icy cold themes, and I thought I'd apply it to... Uh, I thought I'd apply it to tabletop RPGs! Namely in the sense of world building and some encounters or effects or environments that your players and story might find themselves in, or concepts to deal with. So, when setting a game in the cold, I mean there's a few things you gotta actually think of first. I mean, there's the baseline stuff on the hierarchy of needs, security, food, water, but in addition, you've also got warmth is another thing you gotta take care of. And depending on the setting you're running in your tabletop RPG, whether it's sci-fi or fantasy, you've got a variety of options. When it actually comes to warming your environment, depending on the setting, you can take multiple things into account. Even in the game that inspired this, Frostpunk itself, it's a steampunk setting, and it has this massive coal power generator and various bits of steam pipes to, well, use steam to heat things. Bits of research for insulation, the various bits of winter clothing, and the overheating of the generator, potentially? But when it comes to fantasy, I mean, it's magic. Though if you were to bring up this kind of source of warmth, that's a bit of a debate. Uh, I'm skipping ahead a bit. There's general frosty environments, but if you want a bit more frost punk, we'll split this into a section right here. We're going to be talking about the settlement. Just like in the game. So if we're worrying about the settlement's heat, and you might be wondering, well, how are you going to revolve a game around the settlement itself? One, a hub world, but two, something the players can invest in, something to physically see the efforts of their labors outside in the frost coming back to aid this hub. Or sometimes even just making better resources, like, oh, instead of a reward of just coin, the local weaponsmith, because he had time or the resources in the new smith shop that you got supplies for, has made new weapons for you. Whether it's sci-fi smithing or fantasy. Better insulation from hunted beasts. Instead of just magic items or gold, you can actually have it be resources that you specifically get from investing into the town. I would also recommend that this campaign take place over, like, weeks or at least, like, some modicum of time. And we could go into the hub idea on a various other locations, but the name thing about this one is this is a hub that's in need of survival. Not just resources to invest in and then get rewards back, but it's also the fact that you need to keep these people alive. That should be the campaign's main goal, or at least something that everyone's agreed upon. When you're making characters for this, and not the DM, I'm talking players, you're going to be looking for players who are honestly wanting to help and not just out for their own survival. Of They are invested in the settlement survival. The settlement making it through... This blizzard or storm or whatever catastrophe has hit it is the goal of the party. And no, likely not going to be stopped by a BBG, but you might be able to mix that up at the end. But some of the other supplies, while you might not have specifically coal, similar to Frostbunk, you might have, let's say, uh, let's say there's an eternal bonfire. Or there's some flame god you have to appreciate, or there's a druid circle controlling weather. You gotta keep that ritual supplied in some way, and you can use any fantasy MacGuffin to say that actually needs to be supplied. Or just general fuel. Or maybe it's some evil flame or something, or someone made a pact with the fires of hell and you have to fuel it with spellcasters or blood. Who knows? Or maybe that's a rival city or settlement to your own. There's one that's willing to pillage, burn, and take from others to try and keep their fire alive. An entire world being covered in a blizzard that some great spellcaster had let a ritual run amok. Maybe that wizard's dead, maybe he's still alive, maybe it's a lich or who, what other creature. But the blizzard's rampant, and it's less focused on taking out the one BBG, and more focusing on the actual survival of what you can. I mean, this could also bring up great moral complications between some of the players, depending on backstory-wise. And let's say you could come from a variety of settlements that have all ended up being stuck in this one location. And when it comes to sci-fi, you can have a lost colony that accidentally crash-landed in the snow and is using some of its tech to try and build something to keep a heated area or keep the blizzard out. A bit of terraforming tech that, while malfunctioning and not affecting the whole planet, is this one small area or pocket of habitability that is consistently malfunctioning. <laughs> Something close to the one asteroid in Outer Worlds that just has one rogue terraformer that hit a side of it and has only left one habitable bubble. While the rest of the world is a frigid hellhole that is putting pressure on the entire terraformer because the storm is building up, it's going through one of its tough natural cycles, it is to gather supplies from the broken ship or other failed colonies here, or just to aid some of the people from inventing a new method to try and jury rig it, there's some nice objectives. Things to go and find. And nice dungeons, an entire wrecked spaceship that is now covered in frost or frozen in glaciers or trapped in old lost colonies. Maybe there's pirates or cannibals there. An alien species that infested one of the old colonists that was here previously or some of the downed ship. You could have really cool environments. 
Now, when it comes up to the mechanics concerns and some of the environments you might be dealing with in some of these games, we first have to focus on the hub itself and some of the mechanics you have to deal with there. We've already referenced some of them with the flame and some of the environment and the backdrop to this initial proposition. So, of course, when dealing with this, it's going to get cold. Supplies are going to drop low and the city has to manage itself, with the player sometimes bumping in to aid the factions that will be in the city itself proper. How do they handle the cold? You might have people going for charity, you might have people wanting to attack other possible settlements, or some focus entirely on scavenging, some heading towards some kind of worship. Depending on the setting, it can be an entire variety of things. Like if it's a sci-fi, or even the fantasy, some type to es of escape. Some type of escape? Hell, even Frostpunk, this is a thing with the Londoners. And when it comes to the factions, instead of having a single choice that the captain makes between faith and order, you can have these as two factions going on at the same time and what direction to take the city. And the players can come and intervene and slightly shift sway to side to side. Maybe some of these factions have a specific mission they have, a specific item that they need the players to go and get. It doesn't also have to be just two separate parties as in order or faith. Again, like some of the examples of scavenging, focusing on food, water, shelter, labor, whatever. And depending on the fantasy setting, you can have some that were focused on trying to find a source of stopping the cold through magic or some through technology. And again, the groups wanting to leave. A variety of things. And so now there's a bit more thought process in between who the players are helping on the certain missions they go out for. Which, speaking of the role the players are taking up, and the environments they're going to have to face out in the cold, they're like the scouts from Frostpunk. They're going out, they're going to try and get resources, they're going to try and potentially fight threats because you got the tabletop RPG aspect of it. And not just dungeon delve in the sense of like, oh, go for gold. I mean, you can, but at this point, gold isn't as valuable as just raw supplies or specific materials. Supplies-wise, I mean, yes, there's general, like, supply of food or more like securing an outpost. Removing any baddies, bandits that you can't convince over to come and help and drew cannibals or undead or monsters or whatever so that you can secure the supplies that you yourself might not be able to bring back or the specific... But you can set up an outpost and help other people from the town be able to take supplies from here and bring it back to the city. It'll take a course of like a week or a few days, but think of the party as the vanguard and those kind of larger resource aspects. When it comes to specific items, however, the party can do general party dungeon things. Go down, search, discover possible traps, natural or not, get around them, fight things, come back with a MacGuffin. Or additional resources that might specifically help them, similar to the smith or item or equipment example previously. Of course, going out into these environments, it's not just a general dungeon run. Well, I mean, yeah, but... Cold dungeons. Think of the harshness that frost provides. Not just cold, which will be wearing down on you over a long period of time. We'll get to the cold and specific mechanics-wise. Possible mechanics-wise. But namely some of the dungeon environments you might find yourself in. Depending on how quick the frost came in, you could have glaciification, you could have various windstorms, the blizzards, or fantasy or sci-fi environments, a rogue terraforming device that instead of just freezing things entirely solidifies clouds as one massive hail sleet. Or hail that's just this discus shape falling over like a five meter radius. Various bits of frostbit sinkholes, cracks in the glaciers, things that you have to jump over and avoid potentially, various shoddy implementations at trying to get across hazards previously left by other explorers, like shoddy dodgy bridges, ice, ladders, etc. Previous structures which are now failing underneath the weight of all the snow, like an entire fantasy-wise or sci-fi, an entire village or town completely buried in snow. Completely. Some creatures had attempted to tunnel into it and have used some of the previous supports as supplies, but with using any kind of heat, and even just traversing through it generally, it is entirely unstable. The ceiling could collapse in various settings, and also now you have what was previously an open town, an entire underground dungeon with various different themed chambers that do not make usual sense. A church which now has various bits of icicles that had jutted through the imagery of the deity that had been some sign of warmth and hope, now entirely frosted over and buried. A sci-fi colony or ship which has now been pushed or buried underneath a glacier, torn up and some entire buildings either flipped upside down or completely flipped at a high degree angle. Everything shifted around. Or the chasm completely cutting settlements in half. Not just by a physical wall barricading it, but maybe being frozen in a glacier, a bit of ice, and then split. Frost falls, icicle traps that fall from the ceiling if things are too loud, or some kind of explosion or damage that can hit it, so you gotta be careful on what type of weapons or equipment or spells or effects you're using. Slippery floors with the ice itself. Thin ponds that you might be able to fall into, or entire lakes that you might be frozen under. Hypothermia 
is a threat. Not to mention the frostborn creatures which might live there now, depending in real life in Frostpunk's case, it's mostly bears. You could have other bandits and other desperate survivors that might not be willing to listen or come to you. But in fantasy and sci-fi, and whatever your setting is, you can expand this further. Either rival factions, rival adventurers, rival survivalists, zombies. Mix a zombie apocalypse in an ice age? Oh, honestly? An entire pool of like frozen corpses, but their arms are still swinging out? Be neat. When it comes to sci-fi, you could have various robots that are trying to repair an old settlement that are still thinking they're on security duty, similar to that rogue automaton. Or various bits of alien species that happen to just be burrowing underneath or be able a bit more adapted to the ice. Fantasy-wise, frost elementals, undead, constructs, and again, the usual monsters that can handle the cold a bit better. Frost dragons of some kind. But I'd say the general focus would be less on the immediate fighting and more on the survival or the fighting in very, very harsh environments. Not just in the sense of the immediate cold, but like I said, the icicles, the slippery ice, the potential places to fall, the entire settlements and landscape being shifted. Avalanches. Not to mention you can have some kind of strange effect, similar to the Great Storm or the Great Storm Wall that hits in Frostpunk. You could instead have this as an effect or a random encounter that can come in as, oh, the temperature's gonna drop a bit further on this random encounter while traveling. Speaking of which, We'll touch on that a bit later when we also talk about heat and general advice. You know what? We'll talk about that now. When you're going outside the city, you do not have whatever heat system everyone else is dealing with. It's gonna get cold. Freezing. Frigid. You're gonna die. Now, things to take into consideration are forms of insulation, checks to see whether your character can actually survive in this cold climate, seeing some of the things like con, toughness, or whatever you can handle. Heck, all right, a system that I don't think exploits this too much, but even has rules for it, is, uh, um, I was about to give just a single example, but the list continued. D&D, Starfinder, even Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition have rules for extreme cold. They try to take this into account, but normally it's only a single mechanic, and what I'm saying here is expand it. Add new DCs, add different environments, not just a single effect and different equipment. Most of these just have like one bit of winter clothes that you equip and you're fine. Don't need to make the DC. I say bunk to that. What you should do is have tiers of it. Tiers of supplies that add a bonus to making these checks, whether it's some kind of fire, different tiers of insulation that you can put on you and sleep in and have some kind of shelter in, which aid in checking to make against the cold, and varying situations and temperatures to actually increase the initial DC of the frost, which for that travel time and random encounters could go well into actual supplies of food, of fire, kindling, the clothes that your adventurers have, and on those random encounters or certain areas, how severe the storm and temperature drops. Because you could have things which are like, okay, the DC is going to be a bit higher because it's even more frigid, but you could get to the point that, okay, some supplies don't work or some things end up freezing, and if it's magical or terraforming or whatever sci-fi nonsense you want to add in, it gets so cold, things freeze in a flash. Maybe not over long periods, but maybe there's this a frost wall that hits, similar to a hurricane, where it's a burst thing at the other end of the eye. Not necessarily this massive storm wall that lasts a week, but just a brief burst of like a few minutes in the middle of combat of, oh no, there's a frost wall that might hit, and it's rolling every round of combat, and all of a sudden, uh-oh. Anything that was liquid, anything that's not too well protected over a survival area or around heat, might have to make a check even though it's not over a rest period or a long period of time. And let's say it's so severe that in some cases when you're in like ice or liquid water or things that are already cooling to an extent, it might freeze over, give you instant frostbite, or entirely lock you down in some kind of pool of water. Get pretty scary when you involve the environment as an ever-consistent threat that you need to be supplying yourself against, which also goes back in looping to the city and helping you get more supplies, both for the city and what loops back into your own characters. Similar to Frostpunk, maybe a victory point. Whether it's the generator source of heat finally fixing itself, whether it's the storm just seemingly coming to an end at some point, or in like sci-fi or fantasy to an extent managing to escape to somewhere else. Potentially, whatever's causing this, a solution might pop up at the very end, sending your campaign into one final arc. As the city itself has been mostly handled, when one last devastating storm is coming, or you found the source of it, or the source has revealed itself, or a potential solution has arrived. Maybe the terraforming device, 
has been unburied under a recent glacier. Some scouts had found it or some scanner picked it up. When it comes to fantasy, maybe the spellcaster has signal the spellcaster has signaled itself or the reason the ritual did go awry is found out and you have to go back to where it started some final feat of long form travel various dangerous environments because it's the source of where all this is the coldest climates around it and one big final fight whether it's a terraforming complex and like an ai security an alien infestation fantasy it's an undead version of that spellcaster a great dragon or ice elemental that has formed in the process of this ritual however that's if you still wanted to end in a big fight, which, I mean, up to you. It could just be the city's survival, it could be a bit more sandbox, or it could be this. A final capstone to actually letting the blizzard begin to subside. Anywho, that's my general two cents. Again, general. General. And if there's any further elaboration you guys would like, like if there's a specific system, point it out in the comments below. If I got the source book or something around it, I might give it a look. Comments wise, if you have anything you'd like to add, some comments on specifics, or mentioning that you'd like an elaboration on one of these aspects, whether it's in the fantasy general setting, one to a specific setting environment, or when it comes to the sci-fi one, going into specific mechanics for it. Or, I'm saying or a lot, if I was to make my own mechanics or system around this, what would I do? Some basic 1d6 thing. I don't know. If there's any interest and you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. And hope you stick around.